Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. I have Alan Malventano with us. And today we're going to give you a quick update on one of the, I guess one of the first AMD FreeSync monitors that came out in the market. This is the BenQ XL2730Z. Z. Okay, that's the kind of peaked at the model number on the side of the screen here. So um, this is a 144 hertz, um, TN, uh -huh. 2560 by 1440 panel. Mm -hmm. I think it's 27 inches, Yes, I believe, as well. Uh, and what did we decide? The minimum refresh on this is 40? It's 40, yes. It's 40. So mm -hmm. it's 40 to 144, pretty good sizable range. Yeah. Uh, it is TN. Like I said, this is one of the original FreeSync monitors uh, that came out. Uh, we, we looked at this, we looked at an LG, and we looked at an Acer. Mm -hmm. um, and they all had the same primary issue. Like, they all worked fine inside that range. Yep, yep. But, but they, they had all... the issue of overdrive. Yes. And then, and, and, but I mean, the issue of not having really support for any overdrive. So uh, when you were running yeah. in a FreeSync mode, you saw blurring with, you yeah, know, you just, you just saw ghost scenes. You just saw like yeah, whatever, that's what I meant. whatever was on the next frame. There was just a like a ghost image of it, and yeah, like, like trailing behind. Yeah. So that bring up this whole debate of what caused ghosting mm -hmm. and uh, did. NVIDIA's G-Sync have dynamic overdrive, which we found out that it did, and we figured out how that worked. Yeah. Uh, we have since seen uh, other ASUS, uh, well, other AMD FreeSync monitors, the ASUS MG279Q, for example, mm -hmm. that we did a review of, that it properly implemented overdrive. It did. It might not have been a dynamic adjustment kind of a way, but it was overdrive. It was doing it, at least. Right. Yeah. So then we had this monitor that was already out of the market and selling, and people mm -hmm. getting it and saying, hey, this is kind of... Unfortunate, there's ghosting, there's no overdrive. Yep. Uh, BenQ said, hey, we're going to have a firmware for you to fix this. Mm -hmm. It's not a user... Uh, End user upgradable thing. Right, which yeah. is really awful for those people who have already bought it. Um, yeah. But we actually asked BenQ, I said, okay, well, if you're not going to let us update it, send us one that shows that it actually works, mm -hmm. and let's evaluate it and see what it does. So this is that one that we have mm -hmm. that is actually updated and fixed. So what is the kind of report on, on its overdrive functionality? Overdrive works. It's very similar to the Asus panel. I would even say that this one is maybe a little bit better, although this is a TN panel versus the Asus panel, which is IPS. Right. Right. So you still have advantages versus disadvantages there. Would that, would that mean, would that inherently tell us that overdrive works a little bit easier on TN because of the faster response time? I mean, it's easier to implement. You're, you're going up against less of a like resistance to change, right? The pixels and right. IPS don't want to change Because this, this is rated at like a one millisecond response time. Yeah. I think the Asus one was like four or six, yep. I believe. So that, that kind of comes into play for all that. Mm -hmm. So it does work. It does work. Uh, it still is, it varies slightly as the frame rate varies. So in other words, there's not just one setting that you can set it to, right. and it just magically makes all the ghosting or the negative ghosting just disappear. Okay. You're still going to get a slight amount of it, but it's very hard to see. Okay. Um, so drastic improvement over the other version of this monitor, because we had two of them in, in, the, in the office at the same time, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, there's a, there's an, uh, and this, is all, all, this all has to do with the AMA setting. What's yeah. that stand for? I don't even remember, actually. Okay. It's just, they called this AMA, which is confusing to a lot of people, because there is also a blur reduction setting. Okay. And the blur reduction does some other kind of thing with the scaler that is totally not compatible with FreeSync. Like if you turn on blur reduction while mm. this panel is running a FreeSync game or doing anything FreeSync involved, it will kick you right back to the desktop. Hmm. Okay, so blur reduction is something completely separate. It is not the overdrive. overdrive functionality is AMA. Correct. Okay, so um, that all works. That all works. There's the it's off, high, or premium kind of weird uh, gradients to name it. Okay. The default is high. High is basically like good. Okay. Right. If you put it on premium, it's kind of just going a little bit too much. You start seeing negative ghosting. Turn okay. it off. Obviously, you see, you'll see the same thing that everybody with the version one firmware right. saw. Right. Um, and actually, there's a way to check. So that that was what I was gonna see is yeah. So th this is the problem is in the U.S. at least, as far as I know, BenQ has not announced any specific plan to. Uh, refund or RMA or exchange monitors that didn't have correct overdrive Im implementation right. for the ones that do. I think that happened in Europe. It did. Um, so we're still kind of waiting for feedback from BenQ on that. In the meantime, if you're looking to buy one of these displays, because this is a really good monitor otherwise. It's sure. very good build quality. Uh, it's got a lot of interesting features. Yeah. Pricing's uh, good. Yeah, price, 600 bucks. Yeah, pricing for, is fantastic. This kind of a monitor. So yeah. when you get the monitor, other than going into the game and seeing if you have it, how can you tell if you have the good version or the not good version? All right, so you need it hooked up to a desktop, because if you don't, it, it tries to keep going off and the standby on you while okay. you're trying to do this. So what you do is you turn it off. So it's already set up and like running. Right. Turn the display off and you're 
laptop just went yeah. yeah. All right, so that guy's off. Now you hold down the menu button. Now if, if you are familiar with the monitor a little bit, you'll know the menu button is the second up from the bottom sure. of the buttons here. Hold down menu, and then you have to hold down power until it beeps. Then you can let go. And now the display will just come on just like how you might expect it to. Nothing seems any different, except now when you hit the menu button, you get a service menu. Uh, okay. As opposed to the regular OSD that would come up here on the corner. So what's the piece of information that we're looking for? You're just looking for firmware version, and that's the first four digits, V002. Okay, and the other one had V001. V001, simple as that. So that's how you can tell if you've bought one of these XL2730Z monitors, mm -hmm. if you have a good one or a bad one without having to like look for it in a game. Yeah. If you already have one that has version one, I don't really know what to tell you at this point. You might go back to BenQ and try to file a support claim. You might go back to who you bought it from if it's within their return policy and try to do an RMA. Yeah. Uh, you said you were looking on forums and people who had this monitor kind of shipping end of June. Yeah, if you received it like the last week in June, chances are okay. you, you would have got the V002. So, if you, so one. if you buy it now, the chances are good that you get the revised model with the working overdrive. Yeah. But you, you may you never know get for unlucky sure, right? You don't know. You don't know because uh, that press release that BenQ did pertained to Europe, where they said they were recalling stock and they were yeah, doing yeah. all sorts they of. Yeah, they didn't like, necessarily do that for the US. Yeah, we don't so. know if they did that for the US. So if you get unlucky and you got the box in the back of the stack. Yeah. Right, it, it could, could happen, I guess. Um, so that's kind of just an update here on this BenQ display. If you check out the story at PCPro.com, Alan will have some images of the overdrive in action, comparing it to the ASUS monitor, comparing it to what you get on uh, the older BenQ monitor, I guess, and even what you get on some of the, the G-Sync monitors that are out there today, right. as well as uh, linking information and, and uh, where you can find it for sale. Although, again, we can't guarantee you're going to get the one that actually functions as we like it to be. Uh, but thanks for checking out the video, guys. Make sure you check out the website, pcper.com, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Thanks.